no pictures, please. No pictures. No pictures, please. Hey, what up, everyone? Michael B. Petty here. Um, I'm back from L.A. Had a great time. Had fun with friends and family. Got to go to the Santa Monica Pier. Got to try some new things. You can follow me on Instagram. I posted a little bit on at Michael B. Petty. I posted a little bit of what I did while I was there. Um, I finally back into the groove of things. Finally caught up on some stuff that I had, some schoolwork and stuff that I had to get caught up on. And now I got some time to give y'all my opinions on things you kind of want my opinion about. And it's been a while since I've done just like a kind of a sit down video talking about some of the drama in the Amber world or whatever. So I figured what would, it would be a better time to do this now, especially now that I know that she kind of watches my videos. So in this video, I'm going to be speaking like I am speaking directly to Amber because now that I know she watches, I mean, might as well, right? Maybe she'll, maybe I'll just talk right to her and she'll answer me back. You never know, right? So the first thing I want to talk about is the Halloween party thing. Now I did a react to the video. I don't know, was that like last Wednesday or Tuesday or something? I'm not really sure the exact date of when that video came out. Um, and in the video, we were essentially watching her hoard a bunch of new things. She's into hoarding makeup. Now she's adding that to her torrid hoard. And in the video, she's she's planning or getting together a Christmas party. And, or Christmas party, a Halloween party. <laughs> God, I don't even, I'm already, my brain's already on Christmas. Getting ready for the party, we see Becky taking her to Walmart. We see her driving around in the, in the mobility scooter, getting all of the stuff that she needs for the party, which is essentially just a bunch of pre-prepared foods in party trays already. That's all it is. And we see her counting her candy corn, getting her stupid little games ready and all that stuff. And I think in the video I say, I'm sure that, Everyone else is probably doing the bulk of the work and everyone's doing a bunch of like the easy things or whatever. She's barely doing really anything. And apparently Amber took offense to that and Amber decided to Snapchat this out, which is very, this isn't unusual of Amber, but it's unusual for her to like, say, you actually like say my name or whatever, which is like, I mean, I mean, cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad she does that now. For those wondering, yes, it was my party. I hosted it. I did the games. I bought the food, set up the food, etc. I heard some people saying that I didn't do anything, that I just sat on the sidelines. I did everything myself. I'm beyond proud and every day I'm moving more and building my stamina and trying to do more things. I just wish people would stop assuming they know everything that they, when they don't. You are just sp spreading rumors and building other people's opinions on shit that isn't true at all. Michael B. Petty thinks he knows everything about my life. Remember that he doesn't. And thank you to those who messaged me looking out for me so I can clarify things that need to be clarified okay the thing that gets me with this okay I made an assumption I will admit that I made an assumption I make a lot of assumptions about Amber when I'm doing reactions I don't know all of the tea I'm obviously not in Kentucky I'm not in the home I'm not there physically seeing everything with my own two eyes I'm only seeing what she puts on screen I am building my assumption based off of the years, the catalog of videos that are at our disposal, okay? And given, and I believe that the biggest predictor of human behavior is past behavior. In the past, Amberlynn didn't do anything. In the past, Amber, in the past, Ricky and Eric were the ones who did the bulk of the work. Becky did the bulk of the work. Even in this video, the real tea is that the people who set up the party that did the bulk of the work were probably Eric, Ricky, and Becky. They were the ones that did the driving. They were the ones that took you to the grocery store. You, you literally got into your mobility scooter, went down the party section, and just put your arm out and scooped everything into the front of your car. That's all you really did, and then you laid it out on the table. That's all, and even in the videos, you could be say, I put together this, like, m meat and cheese platter. Like, you put together that singular pad platter. And then even in the video, you talk about how Dana is bringing dips and stuff, and Misty's bringing stuff, and Eric's bringing stuff. So, I don't think it's that, I don't think it's that much of a reach. I don't think it's that much of an assumption for me to think that you didn't really do that much. And the truth is that you didn't really do that much. I mean, I've seen people go way further or way farther with their Halloween parties on a way more limited budget than you have, but you're so confined and so immobile at this point that this is the best you can do. And to be Lisa Frank about it, you have a fucking mattress in your living room for you to sit on because you, you can no longer sit on the couch. So... I don't think, and you have to remember that in the video we are shown that. <laughs> so like, I don't think it's that much of a reach for me to think that you didn't do that much. And the truth is that you probably didn't do that much. 
okay? Maybe in your mind you did a lot, and I know that in your mind you live by a whole different standard and a whole different set of rules than everyone else does or, or the general consensus of society tends to live by. I mean, I mean the videos and stuff that, are, that people are digging up and stuff of you just going off about how you, like, you work and you do YouTube and you should be a, applauded for that even though you only had that job for a month and it wasn't for the government even as much as you like to pretend it was and you could be in Hawaii and all, like, all that dumb stuff that you have said in the past, like, it, it kind of negates any kind of relatability and stuff that you could possibly have in the future. And even, even now, your relatability is just lost because I don't think anyone can relate to the fact that, like, you're buying $500, $600, $700 worth of tour clothes every month. Like, most people can't afford that. Most people can't do that. So my assumption that you didn't do much for Halloween and the assumption that a lot of other people probably have about that is probably more on the realm of reality than it is and yes i don't i don't i'm not around you thank god i don't live with you thank god like because i wouldn't be able to deal with having to take care of someone who's so miserable and can not do for themselves in the slightest so you're right like especially someone who did this to themselves like i can't so you're right i don't know i'm not there i don't know everything about your life but there's enough i know about you from the years and years of you vlogging and showing every little dumb minute minuscule thing in your life that i can base my opinion and base and and narrow my scope of how it probably really went down because you are a liar and you never really tell the truth now the next thing i want to talk about is the whole cheating thing so amber lynn has been trying to 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 change this narrative about if destiny cheated or not because it makes her look stupid to be buying her buying destiny and dana paying for them to help them move back or whatever um buying them all this stuff buying them toiletries i mean it this, it is beyond the realm of we weird buying the buying the niece's love paying for them to go out to eat all the time it's it's bizarre it's just bizarre okay it's bizarre that you're like paying for your ex who supposedly hurt you severely. And mind you, when you when you guys broke up, it was toxic as fuck. You were toxic in it too. I'm sure Destiny was probably over. I mean, forcing your, your ex to sleep in a bed with you because you don't want to be alone is the most is probably on the realm of fucked up. It's it's way up there. It's pretty high up on the list. And also, I just want to address this real quick, too, about the whole, like, buying... Because people were like, oh, my God, I don't like that you're, like, saying all this stuff about um, the niece and buying the niece, all this stuff. It's inappropriate. That's all I've said is I think it's inappropriate. I think you're spoiling that child. But also, can we just do... Th can we do this? If... If this was... If Destiny was a straight... A straight woman and she had an ex-boyfriend who was this clingy, obsessive, and it was it was her ex-boyfriend, and her ex-boyfriend was buying her all of these things, everyone's antennas would go up. I'm just gonna put that out there. Everyone's antennas, be that right or wrong, everyone's antennas would go up. I would say 90% of the people would have a problem, and I'm only saying this because a month ago, I, Trisha Paytas was tweeting this dumb shit about how it's inappropriate for Todd and Zayn to live with Jason Nash while he has his children or whatever and i said trish you are far more toxic than those two men will ever be i'm pretty sure jason is a better parent and more cognizant of like what's going on also todd and zane are they're barely ever home and i would put money down that but when Wyatt, when his children are there that they're probably never really there that much and i would be more concerned about if i were jason's ex-wife i'd be more concerned about about my children being around you and not being around, being around Todd and because they seem to understand that there's a dip, there's a difference between adult time and play time so they get that you don't get that and I got a lot of pushback I got a lot of people that came to me are like no it's inappropriate for men to live with children did it did it all this crazy shit and I'm like every it doesn't matter what gender you are dog like People can be abusive to children, period. So if we're gonna like have this high standard of protection of kids and they can only be around like certain individuals or whatever, then we need to like, that needs to be for everyone. That just can't be just for a certain gender of people. Like that's fucking stupid, okay? And I understand that um, 
Things can happen to a child with a man. Things can happen to a child with a woman. Things can happen to a child with a police officer. Like, there, it doesn't matter, okay? It's, a, it's an individual basis, and the parent has to make that decision themselves. But I just think it's ridiculous how I got a ton of pushback in that tweet about that. But at the same time, no, I don't, I don't really hear people saying boo. Uh, those same people saying boo about um, Amber Lynn buying that child's affection. That's all I'm going to say about that. So now, she posted this. Some of you take shit way too seriously. In that Snapchat where I asked Dana about Destiny cheating on me, the whole thing was planned. Rewatch it. That's why Dana made that joke at the end about Becky for real. Y'all are stupid as hell. And we know you take it seriously, and we were right. Destiny did not cheat on me. If she did, I would probably still be taking, talking about it till this, till this day because that's a horrible thing to do, but she didn't. But since it's fun to think she did, y'all will continue to believe what you want. It's sad. What's sad is that you're purposely misleading your audience. That's what this Snapchat rap means to me, is that you get a kick out of gaslighting the fuck out of your audience, and then when they react how you want them to react, you, that you cry foul. That's not fair. It's not fair to lie to your audience about stuff like that and then be mad when they speculate as to what's going down. And there are you now streams of pretty much Dana and Destiny confirming the timeline and how there was overlap. And you were so distraught over the fact that she had moved on so quickly. And you were in drunk on Valentine's Day saying dumb shit. You were, and doing that Snapchat, I, in my opinion, I'm not gonna put the fucking video up, because who fucking cares? I mean, if it's a lie, it's a lie. So what, what's the point of even putting the video up? That's how I feel about it. It's, it's, so either you're a liar or you like to gaslight the fuck out of your audience. It's, the, it, it's those two things. For someone who's so obsessed about people thinking that she's a liar and people thinking that she's not telling the truth and da -da -da and all this stuff, it's just like, girl, you admit to lying. So it's like, you have a whole video of you titled The Things I Lie About. So it's like, I don't understand. Either you, just to, it's, accept the fact that you like to gaslight your audience and you lie a lot because you don't like to um, tell the truth a lot in your vlogs. It'd be so much easier for everyone. It'd be, it would just make things so much easier. Like, just do that. It would be so much easier for us. And the other thing that also gets me a lot with this is what she takes the time out of her, her busy schedule, her busy, you know, waking up at 4 p.m. and dropping Eric and Ricky off at the therapist's office and, you know, all that while she sits in the car and does nothing. The thing that gets me a lot with a lot of this is she takes so much time out of her day to explain. I, and I say so much time, but for Amber Lynn, this is this is a lot for her to like send out a Snapchat rant real quick. It, I love that she will take the time to explain stuff like this, but like we have yet, we have heard boo. We have heard absolute boo about the, the ghost the ghost scammy thing with Norma. We've heard nothing. In fact, that has all dropped off the face of the planet. We have had a known explanation, not a not an explanation about what's going on. Um, we haven't heard anything about Misty wishing people cancer on people. We haven't like there's so many more important things where like actual dumb shit is happening and we've heard nothing not a thing and i think that that is very telling of her character because i i don't know if if i had promoted something and it was and it turned out to be a scam i don't think it's that big of a deal to turn on the camera and be like look we were wrong we didn't have all the facts in this situation um we went into this not knowing everything and we're sorry if you want to if you want a refund of your money, then please go ahead and do that. It's I don't think it's that hard to do because honestly, I don't really think Amber did anything that wrong other than promoting this thing that was an obvious scam and sitting there co-signing a bunch of lies. Because I mean, it's all come out now that like they just didn't try and 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 now that the the husband or boyfriend brother whatever the fuck he is is on here trying to get money out of GoFundMe's too. It's just like come on guys, like I don't know. I just I, I just think I find it humorous that this is the hill that Amberlynn wants to die on is people making assumptions about her Halloween party and whether or not Destin Destiny cheated on her. And then, like, it just... I can't. And and this idea that like cheating is the worst thing ever. Girl, you cheated on your partners in the past. So like if you're if 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 cheating is the most scammiest thing and that's where you base your morality off of about whether or not you hang out with people or whether or not you like deal with people like that, girl, you're a cheater. So like it's it's so dumb. Like it's so dumb to me. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is the whole stalker situation. Okay, so I'm gonna post a screen grab real quick of the five second grainy ass video that someone found of our girl leaving the veterinary hospital. Um, I'm gonna start with a screen grab because honestly the video isn't that great anyway, so it's like, what's the point of putting the video up? If you want like a bigger, a better timeline of how things went down, then I would suggest Aphrodite's Peaches video that she just posted the other day, and I'm gonna put a card so it'll be 
I don't know. It'll be up here. So if you want to watch that, it's up there. I want to. I just want to talk about this real quick. So this person, it's very. Uh, Okay, this per this person lives in the same town or near where Amber Lynn lives and she lives Amber Lynn lives in a very rural area of Kentucky. So, I would imagine that a lot of the neighboring towns probably whenever you want to do something, you have to go to the centralized point and it's my understanding that the centralized point is like Monticello. I don't know. It that's where like a lot of the the bigger that's a bigger town. I don't want to say city because I don't know if it's a city or not, but it's like a bigger town and that's where like the Walmart and stuff is. So, you have to drive like 20 25 minutes if you want to like go shopping all that good stuff now this person was in their car and they saw Amberlynn coming out of the waiting room and took a quick video of her walking and getting into her car honestly I initially when I saw the video I thought Amberlynn was gonna be like see guys I can move I can get into my car by myself because that's always been like a point of contention I think with her is like the people that like I mean, I know, I know I do it too. The people that think that like she can't move and stuff like that. And honestly, I was kind of surprised and, and a little bit shocked that like she was actually able to like get into the car by herself, close the door by herself. Because like when you see her in the car, she is very scrunched up. She's ve like, it looks like she can't even close the door sometimes. So I, I honestly thought when that came out that that was going to be the thing that she was going to talk about. No, that's not what happened. What happened was is that Amber Lynn just tried, decided to take this to a whole other level and claim that the person was stalking her. Now, I mean, if we want to go by like the Webster's definition of what stalking is stalking is to pursue or approach stealthily stealthily and i don't think that that's what happened at all i think it's a little ridiculous for her for amber to take to go to such lengths to say that this person stalked her i think the person happened to be at the same place that amber was and she saw the Hyundai and she took a quick video of amber getting in her car i just honestly that's what i think it was i think that's the 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 extent to which that goes. I, she didn't follow her from one location to another location to another location. She wasn't walking around the store. She wasn't walking around Walmart and stuff like that. Like, so I don't think that that, I don't think that this person stalked her. I, there's two ways that could go about this. And honestly, I feel as though if Amber had just said, look, I think this is a little creepy and I'm a little uneasy about that, I think people would have understood that. I would have understood that. I'd have been like, yeah, that is a little weird. That is a little creepy. You know, hopefully that's as, the, as far as it goes. And that's that. But she, of course, Amber being Amber, she has to take it to like the whole a whole nother level. And she decided to send this woman this message. And this message reads, I don't care that you came to stalk me in a creepy way and not only waited for me for hours, but filmed me and posted it on the internet but I, sh I just should let you know that it is illegal and I do have a lot of fans. Whether you believe it or not, who are pissed about it and threatening to contact the police. Just thought I'd give you a heads up. And before you go run to your little hate group, let it be known that no, I will not be contacting the police because I'm better than that. You have your 15 minutes of fame. Enjoy it while it lasts, hun. Say hello to Karma for me. I'm a huge fan. First of all, I am so sick of this woman intimidating people like this. Okay, so she threatened to sue me and now she's threatening to call the police on someone, but then is also not that not calling the police on them. It is so dumb. In the real world, if you're gonna call the police, you don't say you're gonna call the police, you just call the fucking police, okay? If you're gonna sue someone, you don't say I'm gonna sue you, you just sue them. You go and contact your lawyer, then you have them fill out a docket, you have them send it, you have that person served, and then that's that. This is intimidation. This is someone trying to shut someone down and by a process by abusing things like the legal system and i am not okay with that in the slightest at all it's bullshit it's dumb when foodie beauty does it and it's dumb when this bitch does it and i'm over it it is ridiculous it is the height of just entitlement in my opinion to think that like you are afforded this the legal system is there to work just for you and you can abuse it however you want that is ridiculous and i almost think that i i, I honestly thought when it first came out that she was gonna say, oh, um, look at I move way better than I did. And like, oh wow, looks like I have fans. Looks like I hit the YouTube world or whatever. She likes to compare herself to all these other big YouTubers, right? She, I mean, she likes to compare herself to the Shane Dawson's, to the Jeffrey. She thinks that she is on that caliber of YouTube f fame. And if you don't think that those people don't deal with weird people out in public that will just take a quick picture of them. I mean, I know when I was out in LA, there, there were a couple of times where I thought I saw someone and I got my phone out real quick to just take a quick picture and then I realized it wasn't them. I wasn't stalking that person. It was just like, oh my God, that's 
uh, what so and so or uh, it's like and then and then they turn around and I'm like oh it's not you know and like I mean that's not I wasn't stalking that person it was just oh my god I saw someone that I recognize that has that is somewhat of a public figure and I'm gonna take this picture of them I just think it's just the height of hypocrisy that now if someone films in public it's illegal now when that is her entire brand is filming people without their consent in nursing homes people's children in Walmart and Costa Grande I mean hell an entire meme was born out of you filming people without their knowledge in public, right? The entire beanbag in a hurry meme was created, joke, everything was created out of you filming people without their consent. So I just think that it's really interesting to me how now when that happens to you, a public vlogger, a vlogger that goes into public is now going to cry boo. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous on so many levels. I can't even believe that this is like where we're at now. And this idea that like she has the consent to her picture in public is ridiculous. That's not the law. That's not the law in the slightest. You weren't on private, private property. This woman didn't follow you from location to location, wasn't stalking you through the aisles of Walmart. Like that's not what happened. And let's play devil's advocate. Let, let's play devil's advocate and say that this person was trying to stalk you. Why the fuck would they wait for you at the vet office? Of all the places that you frequent more daily, why there? That makes no sense to me. Like, that's the place you visit the least in your life. That and a gym. Like, that's like waiting for you in front of Planet Fitness. You're never going to show up. So I don't understand how, like, now that she's stalking you. It's ridiculous. It's unheard of. And you're abusing your power. And by doing that and sending those DMs, and you sent that to me too, and we called your bluff on that, and you, I have not heard from you since. Thank God. I'm still waiting for the server to come and process that. I'm still waiting for that to happen. But for you to threaten the police, to threaten that your fans are going to call the police, come on, girl. That is a reach. I mean, I mean, if you think me saying that you didn't do anything for your Halloween party is gross and not a not an accurate portrayal of reality then you claiming that this woman stalked you is even higher than that okay it's beyond beyond delusion and you should be in a padded room somewhere because that's ridiculous that is not what happened sir you are just you are simply trying to create a narrative that you i honestly think it's her trying to create this narrative of her being a victim and then also to prove that she is so popular and so amazing out here in this you killing the youtube game that she's got stalkers now and the truth is that if you really had a stalker, you would be terrified. You would be absolutely terrified. You would have already been in contact with the police. You would have already gone and filed a police report. You would have said everything you needed to say. You wouldn't have contacted them. You wouldn't have contacted your stalker. That's the thing. If you really felt that your life was in danger, you wouldn't have DM'd your stalker, right? You just wouldn't have. Because that would be, that would put you in more danger. That would put you and your loved ones in more danger, okay? And I would, and I would implore Destiny and all of them, if Amber believes that she has stalkers out here, then why y'all letting her, letting her be around your kids and sending her kids to her house and shit? Like, it's just, I don't know, dude. Like, it's, I sit here and I think about this stuff and I'm like, am I going crazy for thinking these things? Like, am I off? I mean, and if I'm off, please let me know, know down in the comments because it is just, it's, it's, it makes no sense to me. My, I am dumbfounded. I am at a loss for words. I am aghast. I don't know. I just, I can't. I just can't. So that is my opinions on the stuff that has transpired on Snapchat so far. I just wanted to give my opinions. I think it's stupid. I just think it's, I think the things that Amberlynn takes the time out of her day to explain are so non-important and non-factors and i think the things that she should talk about she never does and that always confuses me i don't know why i don't know why i'm confused i mean it's been like three years of me watching four years of me watching this woman i don't know why i'm confused anymore i should just really just expect this at this point but i sometimes there's like a, a twinge of me of hope in there that she's going to like come back down to reality she's going to come back down to earth at some point and it just escapes it, it never it's a fleeting moment it never happens. It's with. It's not within reach. It's not within grasp. And I think that I just have to accept that. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you if you liked watching me rant about this, um, remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get more active on Instagram, but. I don't, know. I don't know. Now they're getting rid of likes on Instagram. I don't know how poppin' Instagram's gonna be. But follow me on Twitter. I'm, I'm very active on Twitter. I'm, I engage a lot more on Twitter. Um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, toodles.